You keep on blessing me. You keep on blessing me. Over and over, over and over again. You keep on blessing me. You keep on blessing me. Over and over, over and over again. You keep on blessing me. You keep on blessing me. Over and over again. You keep on blessing me. You keep on blessing me. Over and over and over again. You woke me up. Over and over and over again. You keep on blessing. 
there is a name I love to hear. Yes. I love ah. to sing.
And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you and we give you all of the praise and all of the glory and all of the honor. Father, we bless your name because you are God and you are God alone. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity that you have afforded us to simply call upon your name and tell you thank you for all of the great things that you have done. Although we do not deserve any of them, God, we are thankful for all of them. God, I ask that you will use me on this morning. I ask that you will speak to me and through me at the same time so that your name will be glorified. I hide my flesh behind the cross and I ask that your name will be lifted and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Good morning to each and every one of you. Thank God for uh, you being with us, whether you are in the sanctuary or whether you are watching on Facebook Live. We thank God for each and every one of you. I'm excited to be able to share uh, my convictions about the risen Christ. I'm thankful to be able uh, to talk about a God that has been so good to me. I don't know about you, but God has been better to me than I can ever have been to myself. God has been so wonderful to me, and I thank him for all that he has done and, and for every blessing that he has bestowed upon little old me. And I think there are some people that are watching or in the sanctuary. You can testify with this old preacher that God has been so good to me, and we thank him this morning. I'm going to begin a two-week uh, series. I will start it on today, uh, and I will look at uh, a wonderful passage of scripture, Psalm 20, and I will ask that you will go to the book of Psalms and go to uh, specifically to Psalm 20, and we will look at verses 1 through 5. Again, the book of Psalms, and within the book of Psalms, we will go to Psalm 20, and we will look at verses 1 through 5. Again, the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, Psalm 20, verses 1 through 5. Reading from the New American Standard Version of the text, the Bible says this, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob set you securely on high. May he send you help from the sanctuary and support you from Zion. May he remember all your meal offerings and find your burnt offering acceptable. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your counsel. We will sing for joy over your victory and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Amen for the reading of the word of God. And if I could put a title to this message, I will title this message, I'm taking my victory lap. I'm taking my victory lap. I don't know about you, but I'm taking my victory lap. There's a story, uh, there's a story about an individual uh, that was uh, running a particular race on the UIL races here in the state of Texas. And he was running this particular race, and it was very interesting that he began to take a victory lap. He began to take the victory lap, and as soon as he began to take um, the victory lap, the people around him began to look at him uh, a little side-eyed and funny. As he began to run around the track, he was waving at his mother and father. He, was wave, he began to wave at the crowds. He even began to wave at the individuals who were in the race. He began to take his victory lap. And as he began to take his victory lap, there were people that were around him that began to uh, look at him and talk about him and say all types of things about him simply because he was taking his victory lap. And I found out that people look at you funny when you win. People look at you funny as soon as you begin to take your victory lap. 
It's interesting that people begin to look at you side-eyed when you begin to take your victory lap, but when you were on the losing side of the bracket, no one seemed to say a thing. It seemed to be as uh, that when you uh, endured loss in your life, it seems that uh, you had a multitude of people around you, but as soon as you began to take your own victory lap, now people begin to look at you funny and begin to judge you. And that's why you cannot allow the opinions of other people to dictate how you move and how you walk this life. Because if you allow what other people think about you, if you allow what other people say about you, there will always be a a perplexing dilemma because your life will be determined and predicated on the opinions of other people. And I don't know about you, but I have found out that people are just like the wind. Their opinions can come and their opinions can go. People love you today and hate you by the next hour. And then you must understand that I have to know how to take my own victory lap, or to put it another way, I have to learn how to throw my own party. I don't know about you, but I've learned I don't know how to throw good parties for other people, um, but I know how to throw a good party for myself because you don't really know the things that I really like, but I know how to throw a good party for myself. Or to put it another way, I found out that I have to be my own cheerleader because sometimes I don't have the people around me that will that will cheer you, and you will not have the people around you that will cheer you on. You've got to learn how to be your own cheerleader. Sometimes you've got to be your own praise team member. You have to learn how to be the director and one of the singers. You have to be your own musician. You have to bring your own tambourine. You have to bring your own microphone. You have to bring your own camera and you have to have your own party. If you are going to wait for other people to celebrate you, you're going to be waiting a long time. I've learned in this thing called life that I'm going to bless God all by myself. I'm going to learn how to take my own victory lap, even if nobody else around me likes it, even if there's no one around me that really is excited about my victory lap. That's fine because you do not need a party of people to celebrate you. The only thing you need is a memory. And when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, you don't need anybody around you to celebrate you. I've learned how to give God the praise all by myself. I know you're waiting for me to get into the message, but I'm already in high gear because somebody needs to understand that you've been living your life and you're trying to make other people, uh, you're trying to sway their opinions about you. You're trying to change your hairstyle so you can fit into the circle. You're trying to change your appearance or change your job or change your car only to find out when you change your appearance and change your hair and change your job, the same people that were laughing at you then are going to going to be laughing at you now. That's why you have to be comfortable in your own skin. Whatever you think about me, that's cool. I'm still fearfully and wonderfully made. It really makes no difference, my brothers and sisters. You have to understand, you have to take your own victory lap, and you have to learn how to celebrate your own success. This particular psalm is very interesting and intriguing to me. It is written by by an individual by the name of King David, but it is actually written by David, but it has the help of the congregation. So in other words, David is the author of this particular psalm, but although he is the author of this particular psalm, it is also, it it seems as if the congregation is telling David what to write. And if you do the historical background on this particular psalm, you will see, Deke Lavalus, that at this particular time, David was going off to war. But before he went to war, he had to intercede to God on his behalf. So in other words, David knew, before I fight the battle, I better get the help of the Lord. Here's the problem with many people. You're trying to fight a battle, and the Lord is not on your side. But once you understand that before I can even do anything in this life, I have to have God on my side. And this particular psalm, it, it gives us some things that I believe that are very applicable in our lives that we can uh, that we can apply to our daily living. I like what it says in the, in the very first verse. It says, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. In other words, David is saying, now I know that you have a lot of issues and challenges. 
But what I really need you to do, I need you to pray to God, not when you're in trouble, but I need you to pray to God before you get in trouble. And if you pray to God before you've gotten in trouble, I know he'll answer you in the day of trouble. It's almost like a child that you're raising. It's almost like a child that you're raising. Uh, the child comes in only when they want something. Then you have, I know that's your child and I know you're going to spoil them, but then it comes a point, wait a minute, the only time you coming in my face is when you need something. But then there's that child that just wants to get into the face of their loving parent and the parent gives them more than they even ask for. God says, if you get in my face as I am your loving parent, if you get in my face, I'll not only will help you when you get in trouble, but I'll help you before you get in trouble. And if I help you before and in, you know I'll help you on the other side. It is a good thing to know that David says, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble because I found out, Miss Davis, that that everybody that you call will not answer. There are some people that you call, they will not even answer the phone. You ever done that? I know not none of y'all here on Facebook Live. If you ever looked at your caller ID on your phone and said, mm -mm, not today, because as soon as you call, you're bringing my mind down, my spirit down. I'm so glad that God is not like us. I have to testify I've done that too. Y'all don't talk about me, don't log off, because I found out that anytime I go to the Lord, the Lord will always answer. Now, here it is, Sister Chelsea. He may not tell me what I want to hear, but but I'm thankful that he will always answer. May the Lord answer you in the day of your trouble. Miss Pam, it's good to know that anytime I get in trouble, I got a God that's on my side. See, most people will only help you when you come out of the trouble. But when I come out of the trouble, I really don't need you right then. I need you when the tears are streaming down my face. I need you. When the doctor has said this, all that we can do. I need you when I am an emotional wreck on the inside, but I look good on the outside. You know, church people can front. I know you may not believe that, but when you are an emotional wreck on the inside, but you look good on the outside, God says, I can still help you in the day of trouble. And the Bible says in verse one, may the name of the God of Jacob set you securely on high. I like that, brother Darius. Before I talk about setting you securely on high, the the Bible says, may the God of Jacob set you securely on high. You Bible readers will understand that Jacob was a slickster and a trickster, that Jacob was a game runner and a manipulator. But the same God that helped Abraham and Isaac was the same God that helped Jacob. In other words, if God can help Jacob, who was a slickster, then maybe God can help you. I'm so glad that God does not look at our past and hold it against us, but God says, I'm still a God that can bless you even when you're wrong. I'm still a God that can bless you when you haven't done all the right things. I'm still the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and I'm also your God. And it says in verse 1, may the name of the God of Jacob set you securely on high. This is a word of protection. David says, not only do I need God to protect me, but I need him to set me in a place where the enemy cannot infiltrate. I like this particular piece because David says, I need you to protect me and put me in your secret place and where you put me in your secret place the enemy will not be able to attack I like it goes even further he says may you send your help from the sanctuary and your support from Zion which simply means God says I'm sending you help from the heavenlies I'm not sending you help in the in way in the way that you think you need it but the help that I'm sending you I'm sending it from above let me cut across the field real quick you know that this is a spiritual battle and every spiritual battle requires a spiritual response and God says I'm sending your help but it's not coming from the side it's not coming from behind but I want you to lift up your eyes and look to the hills from where your help comes from God is sending your help not only from the sanctuary he's sending your help from the from Zion and he even goes a step further he says may he remember your meal offerings and make your burnt offerings acceptable God says, or David is saying in this particular psalm, God, remember what I did in the past. Okay, now hold on real quick. God, I know that I'm going in this battle, but I want you to remember every time that I praised you. God, I want you to remember every time that I called on your name. God, I want you to remember every time that I worshiped you. And I pray that you will, that you will bestow 
favor upon me because of what I've done in the past. Hey, here's a good piece of news real quick, that every time I called on the Lord, and not only did he answer me, but I want God to take my praise and let it be acceptable. Do you know that you can render God fake praise? You can render God phony worship. You can give God praise because you see everybody else praising him. You can lift up your hands because you see everybody else lifting up their hands. And then in reality, you are nothing but a phony and a hypocrite. But what God is saying, I want someone that will lift me up and magnify me even if there is no one around. I need somebody to lift me up if, I'm, if you're walking the track all by yourself. I need somebody to lift me up even if it is against popular opinion. I need someone to lift me up even when there is no one around me, even when people are talking about me, even when I'm sick in my body, even when I'm confused in my mind. See, I'm, I don't know if there's anybody that can testify to this. Maybe I might be standing all by myself, but I've learned how to praise God if ain't nobody shouting. I've learned how to thank God if there's no one around. I've learned how to thank God. I need you to accept my praise and let this praise be acceptable in your sight. Yeah, may he grant you, verse 4, I'm in the Bible. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all of your counsel. Everything that I'm asking you for that's in my heart, God, I ask that you will fulfill it. Now, here it is. There is a difference between a want and a need. Uh, God, is, God said, I will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, but I'm not going to give you everything you want because some things that you want ain't good for you in the first place. I think for about five seconds, I'm going to thank God all by myself for, because he didn't give me everything that I wanted. Oh, there were some things that I thought I wanted. I just knew I had to want. And then I looked back at it, and God, thank you so much. You ain't give me what I want. But every time I stood in the need, God said, I'm coming through because I know what you need before you even needed it. Here's the good news about that, Brother Harrell, that God knew what you needed before you even opened up your trap to ask him. And I'm thankful that God sent what I needed before I even knew that I needed the help. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all of your counsel. But here is the meat of the text right here, Sister Lachelle. I'm going to say this piece and I'm done. He says in verse number five, we will sing for joy over your victory. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. Okay, here's a piece of the news that you need to understand. The war has not been fought yet. Okay, you missed it. You missed it on Facebook. You missed it in the sanctuary. Let me start. I'm going to say it again. The battle has not even been fought yet, but it says in verse 5, we will sing for joy over your victory. Okay, hold on. Let me say that again. So the battle has not even begun yet, but the Bible says we will sing for joy over your victory. In other words, I'm going to sing for joy, but, and I'm going to act like the victory is already won. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to act like the victory is won. I know be beyond the shadow of a doubt that before we even wage war, the victory is already mine. I like what my grandfather said, victory, victory shall be mine. I need some victorious people in the building. I know you haven't got it yet. I know you haven't received it yet, but I think you can give God an on credit praise and say, I'm going to sing for joy over your victory. Here's something else I want you to catch in the text. Not only did it say that we will sing for joy over, over your victory, I need you to understand that David says, I'm not singing singing the joy just for my victory. I'm singing the joy for your victory. Hey, my lavalous, I think every now and then you ought to have somebody in your corner that's not just giving a selfish praise and praising God for themselves, but they ought to praise God because they see you getting the breakthrough. Ooh, girl, I see you losing five pounds. I'm going to praise God for you. Hey, man of God, I see you. I see you put the dope down. I'm going to praise God for you. You got to have a cheerleading section, somebody that will encourage you. But even if you don't have a cheerleading section, I like what the next piece says in verse number five, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. In other words, Sister Pam, this word banners means that when we set up banners, it is a sign of victory. So I'm not only singing for my victory, but I'm setting up shop as if the victory has already been won. Hey, I need somebody that's in a battle right now. I want you to give God praise if you're on Facebook or in the building. I want you to give God the praise right now because you know that if 
it had not been for the Lord that was on your side. Oh, let me say it another way. I want you to praise God as if your body is already healed. Let me start to say it another way. I want you to praise God as if your mind has already been regulated. Let me say it another way. I want you to praise God as if your job opportunity has already come. Let me say it another way. I want you to praise God as if your promotion has already come. Ooh, let me say it another way. I want you to praise God as if the door has been open. Here's the good thing. I don't need to shout because the door is open. I'm shouting if I see a wall. But if God says you're going through it, I don't need to see it. All I need to do is thank God for it. And if God said it, that settles it. And I'm going to shout all by myself. Ooh, this, presence, this message must be for me. I want to thank God because God says it's time for you to take your victory lap. I know that the battle hasn't been fought yet, but I'm going to take my victory lap as if the victory has already been won. Hey, remember that young man I told you about at the beginning? He's taking his victory lap around the track. And the person that is over the particular race comes up to the young man. He says, sir, you have, a, you have some nerve. You're taking your victory lap, but the thing is the race hadn't even started yet. He said, wait a minute. You're taking a victory lap. You're taunting your, your, the, your opponents. You're taking the victory lap as if the race has already been won. The racer looked the man in the eye and said, sir, Here's something that you do not know. At this time last year, I tore my ACL. The doctor said I may never run again. And so this is the first race that, I've, that I'm running after my surgery. And just the fact that I'm running means that I've already run. So it makes no difference who comes in first because I'm still here. I'm thanking God anyway. And I need somebody to understand it's not the place that you come in, but the fact that you're still running, you can can give your God the praise. You can thank God and take your own victory lap. It makes no difference if you come in first, if you're still running, because the race is not, the, the award is not given to the swift, but it is given to the one that will endure to the end. Hey, I need some endurance runners. This is not a 100-yard dash. This is a, this is a, a long-distance runner. You know, a long-distance runner trains different than a 100-meter runner. You don't, you, if you're running a 1,500, you don't train like you saying both, but I'm in the race and I'm running it until the Lord calls me home. And here's the good news. I might as well shout right now. I'm going to shout right now like the victory is already done. Do I have some people on Facebook that don't mind throwing some hands up and giving God some praise wherever you are or the few that's in the sanctuary? You can give your God the praise. It makes no difference where you are in the race. I'm going to praise him as if the race is already won. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you all of the praise and we give you all of the glory. We give you all of the honor. God, thank you, Father, for allowing us to take our own victory laps. We thank you, God, that we don't have to see the victory in order to thank you for the victory. So, God, for every person that is under the sound of my voice, I ask you that you will encourage them while they are on the race. I ask that you will keep them and hold them, God. As they, as they begin to run this race, I'm going to shout before the battle is even started. And if I've shouted before the battle starts, I will shout when it is all over. Because the common denominator is that you have been there in the midst. So God, I ask that you will bless each person, whether they are in the sanctuary or on Facebook Live. Continue to bless them and keep them and hold them as only you can. And we will be careful to bless you and give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. To, again, to each and every one of you, thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning. We pray that the message has blessed you in some way. Uh, you do have an opportunity if you would like to become a member of the Strong Time our family. You can do so by going to our website, www.mystrongtower.org. You can go to the new members tab and you can actually become a member uh, online. You can also give uh, to uh, our, our church family. You can give by going to that same website and going to the give tab and you can give electronically as well. So we thank God for each and every one of you. May the Lord continue to bless and keep you. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another in Jesus' name we, we pray. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.